You know, I thought I would take a break from reviewing speakers for a minute and kind of get back to the humanistic side, the more personal side of this hobby. And uh, I saw a post on Facebook from one of you guys, Johnny Richards, and he had posted a picture of him back in the day with what looked to be a ported subwoofer enclosure. And it looked like the port hadn't been included yet. So I just kind of made a joke about, oh, I like the the no port port. And then he replied back. And then that got me thinking to a time when I first got started in car audio, which was the early 2000s. And <laughs> I'm going to get to that. But it really, it made me think about, you know, ignorance is bliss. And I believe Johnny actually said that quote, you know, ignorance is bliss. And I've said that many times over my years of being involved in car audio and home audio that when you get so embedded into this hobby, whether it's from car audio or pro audio or live audio or home audio, just whatever, even home theater, you get so far down the rabbit hole that when you look back, you go, wow, I'm really deep in this. I'm thousands of dollars into this. I'm years into it. You've gained a whole bunch of knowledge, but are you really any happier than you were when you first started? The first time that you hooked up subwoofers in your car, or you got a set of cheap passive two-way speakers, or even a sound bar, are you really happier? I can't answer that question. My hope is that your answer is yes, but that you also understand the struggle that you have when you really think about that question, am I happier where I am now versus where I started? Is ignorance truly bliss for me? So with that in mind, I'm going to go through a little bit about how I got started in this hobby because I thought, you know, it's fun to share these stories and I'm not going to try to go into every single bit of detail in this, but I kind of think it's fun, you know, for people to understand where my start is and maybe you can relate to it. So Back around, I'm just going to say a ballpark of like 2000 and maybe two, I had a Ford Explorer. I think it was a 1997 Ford Explorer. It was a champagne gold kind of color. I bought that. It was a four-door. I bought that because I wanted to have plenty of room for me and my buddies to throw our BMX bikes in the back and just take off. Go to Nashville or go to Atlanta or go to Memphis, go to Birmingham. I'm from North Alabama. Let's just kind of give you an idea here to go ride our bikes. And we rode street BMX. This is what we did. We didn't race. We would just go to a city, park the car, get the bikes out, and just go exploring. That was the best part about BMX for me was, number one, just being on a bike, being quote unquote free, you know, just rolling around in a city, but looking and exploring and trying to find new spots and rolling up into places where, man, it's shady. And you literally might not make it out alive. I've been jumped while riding my bike. I've been in some pretty scary situations that maybe one day I'll do a live stream and you guys can ask me about them and I'll talk about them. So I had that Ford Explorer. And the first thing I wanted to start off with was a new CD player because the deck that came in it, I don't even think it played CDs or maybe it just messed up. So I got a Sony Explode CD player from Walmart, and it was probably like 80 or 90 or 100 bucks. What I liked about it was that the fascia changed colors. So there was like an OLED type background, and it changed colors between red, yellow, blue, maybe some other colors, maybe like six or seven different colors. thought that was awesome. About maybe six or seven months later, it was Christmas time, and my mom had said, well, what are you thinking for Christmas? You know, what do you, what kind of ideas? Crutchfield had just sent out a new Christmas wish list type catalog thing. Open it up. There was a set of Rockford Fosgate 401 S punch amp amp with two tens in a sealed prefab enclosure. And I thought that's what I want. It was 250 bucks. And I thought if, if I get nothing else, if everybody just wants to pull all the money together, or if I just ask for cash, that's what I want. So my mom was like, sure, go ahead and order it. And, and thanks, mom. Um, and for what it's worth, if you guys don't already know, my mom is the primary reason that I have such a passion for music. But that's another story for another time. So I got that set up. My buddy Eric Coleman came over and we went to my buddy Andrew's house. 
We wired it up, set everything up in there. We actually blew a fuse. So around one o'clock in the morning, we had to drive to the nearest Walmart that was open 24 hours, which is about 30 miles away. We went and found a pack of fuses. Uh, they had a 10 amp fuse. I replaced the fuse for the radio for the car in the stock fuse box. And then I had my first subwoofer system. And I can't tell you that I thought it was like the greatest thing ever. It bumped. It probably rolled off below 40 hertz. You know, cabin gain helps, but probably didn't go much below 40 hertz. So I rocked that for a while. And then I blew one of the subwoofers. So what did I do? Well, I go up to Circuit City. Circuit City has a sale on a open box Alpine Type R 10 inch. Now, remember I told you I had two Rockford Fosgate 10 inch subwoofers that came in this kit, but I only blew one subwoofer, right? I only need one subwoofer. Any subwoofer will do. I go get this 10 inch Alpine, put it in this prefab enclosure. Now, this is all a sealed enclosure that shares internal volume, the same internal volume space. It's not separate chambers for each subwoofer. So I've got two mismatched subwoofers. I don't even know the load because I don't know anything about loads. This is around 2003, 2004. I was, I was happy. I was as happy as a pig in mud. I banged on that for a while and then I heard about ported subwoofers. So what did I do? I took this prefab enclosure. It's got enough room at the top where I can drop some four inch diameter PVC pipes in. So I drill them out. I just drill them out. I drill them out and then I cut them out with the jigsaw. And then I drop the PVC pipe in. I don't even think I glued the PVC pipe in place. I just dropped the PVC pipe in and I just started banging on that sucker. Well, then I blew another subwoofer. So then I had to replace the other Rockford Fosgate with another Alpine Type R. Then I was good to go. Then I, then MP3s were like more of a, a mainstream thing. People were burning MP3s on disc. So you're telling me I can fit two to 300 different songs on a single CDR? Dude, it was on. So I loaded up the CDR with all sorts of music. And I specifically remember purchasing, it was an Alpine 9807. And I loved that CD player because it was blue buttons and lighting, but on a silver faceplate. And it was so awesome. And I loaded up like G-Unit, a bunch of rap because it was just I was just a subwoofer guy at this time. A bunch of rap music, but I also remember having my Lionel Richie mix on there. I had to have Lionel Richie um, running, running in the night, dancing in the shadows. That was one of my favorite jams, and it has a bump to it too. Now this time I'm in college. I'm working two different part time jobs, and I'm going to school for aerospace engineering. I got my first co op job around 2005, and with that, I took a little bit of money and set it off to the side and I went to Louisville. I should say I moved to Louisville. I wound up getting a JL Audio Pro Wedge 12W6. It's a sealed enclosure. I'm sorry, 12W7 with a JL 1000 slash one amplifier. That thing was dope. So then what did I do the next thing? Alpine four channel amplifier with separates. And then for the tweeters, I went out and bought some MB Court tweeters. And with little paper clips, I wedged them up into the pillar area. That car was tweeting and a bumping. Now, I had fallen in love with Alpine's flip out head unit. So eventually I saved up and up scratch and got one of those. And I had just an awesome system and I loved it. I built a new ported enclosure slot port tuned to about, I think it was like low, maybe 31, 32 hertz or something like that based off of what people had suggested. Or maybe it was 28, 29, but it was somewhere in that range. And that system beat. Now, Jeezy had came out with a new album. It was Young Jeezy back then. Now it's Jeezy. So, Soul Survivor. If you guys know that song, you know that song hits. I was just banging on that song. And, and then I started reading about sound quality on caraudioforum.com and diymobileaudio.com. And then that's when I really got into trying to understand how can you get better sound, not just loud bass, but how can you truly get better sound? How can you try to create a reference stereo in the car? And I will tell you that with that endeavor, I've learned so much about audio because I had to read and understand about acoustics, not just drive units, but actual acoustics. And then from there, it went to me understanding more about drive units and then testing drive units using Clipple products. And this was like 2009, 2010. 
Now, fast forward, you know, I am where I am now, but there was that long stretch of time between about 2010 to about 2020 or so before I started this channel where I was constantly looking for the next best thing in pursuit of the next best thing, either home audio or car stereo, always trying to make it sound like a quote reference system, tonality, good, smooth tonality, good imaging, good focus, all those technical details that you want from a system, but also one that is enjoyable. And I will say that in that span of time, it was very easy for me to lose sight of just enjoying the music. And I think about today, you know, I do all this testing, I do all these listening to speakers and I will criticize speakers or I will praise speakers for certain qualities and no speaker is ever perfect. I've said that I've got videos on that. No speaker is perfect 100%. There's always a compromise in a design, whether it be just alone and sensitivity or maybe it's in terms of the radiation pattern. Maybe it's in terms of the actual output, dynamic range, compression, those factors. It's never going to be perfect. The best that you can do is to find the qualities that matter more to you and find the speaker that aligns with that best and then just deal with the trade-offs that you're going to be left with. And one price or one trade-off obviously is price, but even with an infinite budget, you're still going to run into things. I mean, if you want a speaker that can get really loud and have a lot of dynamic range, but also sound smooth and neutral and do the things that you want, it's going to cost money, but they're also going to take up space. So there's always trade-offs. But getting back into understanding what it is that I like about the music, it's kind of hard sometimes to switch off that analytical brain. And I think about, I go walk sometimes with just my phone in my hand. And I'm listening to whatever I feel like listening to that day, you know, a rock playlist or a rap playlist or a 70s groove playlist or, or just whatever. And I'm listening to it through my phone, not even headphones sometimes, but just through my phone. And I'm happy. And I think, man, why can't I just be overall happy with everything? And then I will tell you all that it kind of concerns me. Am I taking the joy away from you? When I review a speaker that you might own or you might already enjoy and I say I don't like it, because I think a lot of you understand that I do this from the perspective of not to just crap on stuff or, or I'm not negative. That's not my nature at all. But I try to be honest and I try to treat you all like I would a friend in terms of how I would give advice. If you came to me and asked me a question about a speaker that I'm reviewing, I want whatever I put in the video to be the exact same thing that I would tell you in private and in person. And I just worry that when I talk about things and, and make you more attuned to them, am I taking the enjoyment away from you as well? Are you keying in on the things that I point out and does it bother you? For example, let's say I reviewed a speaker recently and I noticed some sibilance. Maybe you didn't notice it at first, but now you do. And you're like, oh, dang, I, yeah, you're right. Does that suck for you? Like, does that take the enjoyment away from you when I do that? I've noticed personally when I've gotten feedback from others about a stereo system that I've built or tuned, hey, it doesn't quite do X, Y, or Z. Well, if I hear it, it's hard to unhear it. Luckily, I'm using DSP. I can usually go in and fix those things pretty easily. But I just hope that I'm not taking away the enjoyment from you. And that kind of gets all right back to, you know, the ignorance is bliss saying, because I can think when I first started in the audio hobby, Dude, I didn't know anything about sound quality. I didn't know what imaging was. I didn't know what timbre was. Heck, I didn't even know how to pronounce timbre until like two or three years ago. It's not timber. It's timbre, but it looks really weird. I don't like how it's spelled. But anyway, uh, I didn't know about soundstage and focusing. I didn't know those terms. I just knew that I liked to bump and I really loved music. Now, that still hasn't changed. Matter of fact, I've got a, a new vehicle build that... I'll be talking about shortly in an upcoming video and it's got an 18 inch subwoofer in there. Now I don't go around neighborhoods blasting music to bother people. I do this on my own. I turn the volume down at red lights because I don't want to draw undue attention to myself, but I just love the music and I really enjoy it in the way that I want to listen to it. And that can be in a factory car stereo that can be with an upgraded car stereo, Bluetooth speakers, sound bar, whatever speakers that I'm listening to, unless they're really bad. And that also is another thing too about 
when I'm listening to a Bluetooth speaker, I'm not listening for sound quality at all. There is because if I were, I would never enjoy the music that I'm listening to. When I'm listening directly through my phone, I'm not listening for sound quality. I'm not listening for imaging. I'm just listening to the content. But when I switch over to this reviewer mode or I switch over into listening to speakers from a two channel perspective or a home theater perspective, in order to do what I'm doing effectively, I do have to be critical and I do have to say, do I like this about the speaker or is this standing out and and ask myself these questions and be honest with you all. And that sometimes can take the enjoyment out of it. But occasionally, actually not occasionally, most of the time, the speakers that I listen to are quite good. So I've got these Dyn Audio Emit 20s over my shoulder and by measurement, they don't look great. By ear, there are certain few things that I did not care for, and they line up great with the measurements. I mean, they, it makes even in my notes before measuring, I'm listening to the speakers and I'm writing down this range question mark. Sure enough, in the data, this range there, there's something there. But even when a speaker isn't perfectly neutral, there are still aspects to them that I can enjoy. There are some bad ones like the FIO SP3 that I've reviewed recently. That's just a huge 7 dB dip through the mid range and one resonant peak in the bass and a whole bunch of boosts and highs. Same thing for the PreSonus Aris 3.5 second gen and the first gen. There are speakers that I get in and I hear, unfortunately, that are just plain bad. And I wouldn't be doing a service to you all if I didn't relay that. And it's not that I don't enjoy listening to music. It's just that when I switch over into reviewer mode, I've got to keep these things in in account. You know, if you're spending your hard earned money, whether it be $200 or $2,000, I want you to understand what you're going to get into. So it makes more sense and you can make the right purchase decision for yourself. Uh, But with all of that said, you know, I'm just going to kind of wind it back and, and go back to this hobby is fun. I enjoy the heck out of it. I can listen to music on pretty much any source and still enjoy it. But there are times where I do think to myself, man, ignorance really is bliss. You know, when I had that first stereo system, that was not that good. And it probably hit like two notes in the sub bass area that were halfway decent. I just remember rolling with the windows down and and I had much more hair back then, I promise. Within the wintertime, heat full blast, windows down, just listening to my music, just cruising on the highway, just loving it. And... What I hope for you all is that when you watch my videos, you kind of see some of that come through. But more importantly is that you're able to take my reviews into mind. And when you go back and listen to speakers, you're able to understand, you know, "Ah, I get why he doesn't like this, but, you know, there are other qualities that I like about the speaker, or maybe I can work on it, or maybe this speaker isn't for me. Aaron's reviewed this other one that seems like it would be better. and, And then I can do that and I can enjoy this hobby even more. You don't have to have a perfect speaker, but you don't want a junky speaker either. So uh, I'm just going to kind of end it there. I'm starting to get to the point where I don't want to ramble. So I think this is a good stopping point. But let me know what you all think. I'm curious, you know, where your beginnings were and what you see this hobby for you as. You know, do you have a lot of time where you critically listen? Uh, Do you find it hard to, to switch your brain off from an analytical listener? Maybe. Not everybody does that. I know some people don't have a clue what they're listening for. And that's part of the ignorance is bliss. And I I really should have mentioned that too, you know, through my years of listening to different stereo systems and tuning them and tweaking them and setting them up. It's easier for me to pinpoint things I don't like very quickly. And when a speaker just doesn't quite hit the nail on the head in X, Y, or Z way, I can identify those pretty quickly and it kind of takes the enjoyment away. So it's harder to find something that you really, truly enjoy listening to all of your music on, but that's a me thing. That may not be a you thing. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I will talk to you all later and I hope you have a good one. Take care. Peace.